and welcome to this part three in our little series on electrifying and midifying a wooden keyboard from a tracker action organ. In part one we fitted some thumb pistons and in part two we fitted all of the key contacts and the wipers and in this part we're going to look at wiring it all up and actually getting it to work so that we can use it with our virtual organ project. In order to simplify wiring we're going to use one of these um, connection strips and they have all these pads along the back here as you can see and if I zoom in on them um, you can see that they're marked with the note names um, of the keys that we're going to connect to. So they're in groups of eight because that's how this encoder works. We're going to use this with the Hawk to Work hardware uh, Tutty encoder which is the one that doesn't require any programming or anything, it's simply plug and play. Uh, and that's an 8x8 matrix encoder. Um, but we don't need to care about that other than the fact that these are in groups of 8. So um, you get 8 keys in one group and then you can either connect um, the, a wire from each of these pads to each side of the switch or the contact or if you want to, because they're in groups of 8, we can just connect one wire from this group of 8 um, pads at the top here to a common wire that covers eight keys and then we connect the other side from each key to its corresponding pad on here. Uh, which sounds a bit confusing but it's really simple and you'll see how that works uh, in a minute when we actually do it. And then we're going to use this small um, breakout board here for the uh, thumb pistons. And because this doesn't have any diodes or anything we're going to have to add a diode to each thumb piston. But again you'll see how we do that shortly. Um, I'm going to use these little screws, these are the same ones that we used um, to adjust the contacts with and um, we'll use those just to screw these uh, boards onto the back of the keyboard. So again I've installed the 2mm drill uh, bit in our drill um, so I'll just drill some pilot holes and get this attached to the back of the keyboard. OK, I've mounted the boards to the back of the keyboard assembly now. Um, there's our large board for all the notes and then the small board over there for the thumb pistons. So the next thing we're going to do is look at wiring them up. Um, and we're just going to run wires from each one of these to each key in turn. So um, that's C, uh, the bottom C of the keyboard. Um, so that's going to run along to our first switch here. Uh, the next one obviously C sharp and that's going to run to the second switch D, D sharp, E, F and so on. Um, so we'll do the first block of eight um, and then we'll have a look at uh, commoning them together and how we do that. Um, that's the, the, the part for the um, top row of pads. So the bottom row of pads are for the notes and the top row of pads are for the common side of the switches. So just before we get started I'll show you the wire that I'm going to use. Um, this is made up of seven strands, I don't know if you can see it, I'll put it against the back background, you can see the individual strands there. So seven strands of uh, tinned copper wire um, and they're 0.2mm um, diameter each. So when you buy this stuff it's just labelled 7 slash 0.2 uh, usually um, and this has a black um, PVC covering. So that's about the kind of best size really to use for wiring this stuff up. It's big enough that we can handle it and it's small enough that it's um, going to neatly fall into um, the, the shapes that we need. The solder I'm using, uh, this is 0.7mm diameter, um, it's uh, ro rosin cord um, with, with flux, so it's, it's got flux up the middle in cores um, and again this, this is a good um, good choice to use. Okay, so the way that we deal with these switches um, is that we've got the four wires as we've seen uh, in the last video when we were putting them all together. Um, so each switch has got these four wires that come right through and out the front and when we press a key uh, basically it just comes up and forms a short circuit between all four wires. So where they come out the back of the key all four will be connected together when a key is pressed and when the key is not pressed they're all isolated from each other. So really we only need two um, for a switch but because we've got four we might as well use them um, and it's just going to make it a little bit more reliable. So what I like to do is that I'll common them together so we'll solder these two together and then we'll solder these two together um, and then for each switch once we've soldered them all together uh, we'll bend these two up out the way for each one um, like that and that's going to give us um, our connections to the common side 
uh, of our uh, circuit board and then these ones will give us the connections to the note side of our circuit board so basically for each set of eight switches we're going to connect the top ones together for all eight and then that will be one wire that comes back to our common um, connection and then the notes will all be separate and they'll come back to their respective connections on the board as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to solder these all together um, in the way that I've just explained and bend these up out of the way and then we'll look at running some wires. Okay, so I've soldered each of these uh, together, so now our four wires um, are effectively two, if you like, or two sets of two. So now I'm just going to start running wires from um, each of these bottom um, connections across to the corresponding inputs on our circuit board. So that's for C, C sharp and D and so on. Um, so that's how that's going to work. So if I just zoom out a little bit um, so that you can see how this is going to go. The first thing to um, prepare the actual wire we want to just strip a little bit of the insulation off the end um, to expose the, uh, the actual um, copper and then we pop a little bit of solder onto that So that's ready now to um, connect to our switch. So try and keep my hands out of the way of the picture, but we just solder that onto there. So that's done. So that now is going to run along to our C uh, input on our circuit board. So what I do is just fold that down, put it fairly tightly because that's where it's going to go. We're going to lace all this together. Obviously there's going to be lots of wires here. So we want them all to be um, as tight and as neat as possible. So we measure the length of it kind of like that. So I'm now just going to cut that off. And we pretty much do the same to this end as we did to the last or to the other end. So we move a little bit of the insulation pop a bit of solder on the end. Now our pads here, um, we just want to put some solder on that to pre-tin it really as it's called. So you can see now there's a blob of solder on there that's ready to accept our wire. And then we just bring our wire along. You need to be kind of a bit ambidextrous to do this, especially when the camera's in the way, but uh, that's not going to help, is it? Because you can't see what I'm doing. Hang on a sec, let me get a small pair of pliers to hold the wire with. And then you'll be able to see what we're doing. So I'm just going to hold the wire with the, with the pliers there, and I'll hold that up against that. I'll apply the soldering iron, and that's it done. So that's our first wire. Um, into place and then we just do the same with all of the keys making sure obviously they go to their correspondingly labelled notes on the board here. So I'm going to get on and do the next uh, eight. I'll finish this first section of eight um, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we do the um, common rail. Okay I've connected the first eight um, key switches to the circuit board here as you can see and what we need to do now is connect the other side of these switches so these were the ones that we bent upwards we want to connect those all together with one long piece of wire and then we want to bring that down and we need to connect it to the top um, connections of this block now these are all connected together internally within this circuit board so we only need to connect to one of them and any one will do so it's whichever is easiest to get to so on this one we'll use the first one so the way that I do that is to get our piece of wire and see roughly how long that needs to be to cover all of those switches to the end. So that seems about right. So what I'll then do is strip the insulation back all the way along like that. Okay, so it's now kind of all the strands have popped out 
and it's got no insulation on that. So what we do then is to bring them all together and then twist them so that we end up with just one piece of wire that we've made from twisting together all of the individual strands. And we just keep twisting until that's done all the way along. Okay, so now we just want to run some solder along this bit so that it's all um, tinned and ready to connect to our switches. So this is where it gets a bit tricky um, to hold everything and uh, and actually make it work. But here here goes. I'll try and keep it in front of the camera. Takes just a little bit to get it going because the wire has to get really hot for the uh, flux to be absorbed into it, or the solder to be absorbed and the flux to be activated. So that's the first bit done and then we can just kind of work our way along Something like that. Now, I haven't done all of it, about halfway along, but what we can do now is that we can solder the first couple of bits or, or the end of it to the first couple of key switches and then that'll hold it still for us. So that's going to make it easier to solder or to tear in the rest of the length of the wire. Um, I have to say, after you've done a few of these, you do end up with kind of heat proof fingers. Um, but just a one of those things I guess so that's now holding the wire for us so now I can just run the solder along the rest of it I mean in theory you don't need to solder the whole thing really it's it only needs to be where the um, the key contacts are soldered to it but it just makes it stiffer um, and easier to work with and I think it looks neater as well if everything's uh, all the same and soldered all the way along. Okay so we can just solder that down to each of the keys now like that. Some of them you might just need to add a little bit of extra solder. It depends how much is on the wire at that particular point along it. Um, but there we are. Okay, so that's soldered all the way along there now. Um, and I'll just get it nice and straight. And then I bend this end of the wire down, bring it along to the circuit board here, and we just do like we did with all the other wires. So we're just going to cut that off. Strip a tiny bit along or off of the end. Put some solder on that. Put some solder on the first pad of the top row where it's going to go to. Get our pliers. And there we are. So that is the first set of eight completed. Now I'm just going to move the camera so you can get a, a better look here at what we've got. So it's important that none of these actually touch each other, which they don't. And it's also important that you don't leave the wires so long that they end up touching the top pads because remember it's a switch making a contact between the top pad and the bottom pad that activates the note. Um, so if you had a wire uh, on the bottom that was too long and it was touching this or it sometimes touched it, sort of brushing lightly against it, what would happen is that you'd that note would keep going on and off, uh, which obviously would be really annoying if you're trying to play some music. Um, so as I also said earlier, just to recap, the uh, all the ones along the top row are connected together, which is why we only need one coming from that, and that one connects to the top of each switch. If you really wanted to, you could connect 
uh, connect them so that the um, one side of one switch goes to there and the other side of the same switch goes to there and then you could do one side of the next switch to there the other side of the next switch to there and so on all the way along um, you, but you'd end up with like a whole bunch of wires that you don't really need so this is the easiest way to do it um, and this is what I like to do so we now need to do that for the rest of the board so that's the first set of eight there are uh, eight sets of eight giving us 64 inputs but we only use 61 of them obviously because there are only 61 keys so I shall go ahead and get all of those connected and then we'll come back after that. I've finished wiring up all of the contacts now. Um, as you can see we've got a wire from each one and they all run along and they connect up to our circuit board in the middle and they're coming in from both sides. And then with the exception of the last um, octave they're all in groups of eight. Uh, the last one's only got five. Um, simply because it stops at 61 and 8 8 to 64 so the final three we don't have a use for so um, they don't get connected so what we need to do now is take all of these wires um, and just tie them all together and make them all nice and neat and tidy and there's a couple of ways that we could do that um, one way would be that we can use these uh, little plastic zip ties and just put them you know round and tie them together all the way along uh, but I don't really um, like those, I'm not a great fan um, in this particular kind of usage situation. Um, I, I don't really like them for that. Um, another way of doing it is we could use this um, split plastic stuff, uh, which you can get from uh, kind of eBay and places like that, where you can just um, stretch it out and wrap it round. Uh, and that does look a bit nicer, um, but my preferred method, uh, what I like to do, um, is actually just lace it together with old fashioned lacing cord, uh, which is this stuff. Um, and it's a nylon covered um, sort of cord of stringy sort of stuff, but it, it's, it's very very strong um, and, and you can pull it as tight as you like and it won't break. So I'm going to use that just to lace this together along here, which makes it look all nice and neat and tidy um, and we'll come back when I've done that. Okay, so for those who are interested, um, the way we use this lacing cord um, is basically we just tie it all together. So <coughs> we put a loop around the end to start with and this is going to be really hard to show uh, without me getting in the way all the time but um, I'll do my best to give you an idea. So we put a loop around it and we tie a knot in that so that gets us started um, and then another little knot just to make sure it doesn't all come undone which would be a bit of a disaster. So that gets us started off um, and then we take the other end of the cord and I like to do it every key really, or every cable entry. So we just put that through, loop it through itself and pull it tight. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways of, of doing this cable lacing. Um, some people like to do like a, um, a, a double uh, kind of loop round and if you do that then um, it makes it stay in place more firmly because if I let go of that it's, it's all just kind of, kind of come undone. Um, the other way you can do it is to actually put a um, <clears throat> when you pull this through, if we turn that into a loop that way and then put the wire through it again, or the, the cord through it, that actually makes like a knot. So you can see it's tied a knot around it now. Um, and again, that'll, that'll pull nice and tightly, but it won't come undone so easily if we let go of it. So that's what I generally do. So it's just a matter of working your way along at every key turn that round, pop that through and pull it tight and we do that whoops, we do that over and over until we get to the end. So I won't do it all on camera because it will take for ages and, and it, it won't be very exciting but uh, that's just to give you an idea of how it works. Okay so that's all of the wiring um, laced together now and uh, it's nice and neat and tidy and it keeps it up out of the way of our other board which we're going to be connecting up to next when we do the thumb pistons. Um, so this just runs all the way along uh, from either side and it just looks nice um, and it's kind of, I don't know, I just prefer that effect really with the older keyboards, um, it looks more in keeping. So next thing we're going to do is to flip the keyboard over and look at wiring up the thumb pistons. 
Now having fitted uh, all of our contacts on the keys, um, the next thing to do is wire up our thumb pistons. And so there's a couple of things we need to do before we can do that. Um, underneath the keyboard, uh, I've fitted a scrap piece of wood, which is going to be a guide for my router. Uh, and the reason is that where the thumb pistons are in this channel here, if you like, um, there's no way to get the wires from there to um, the back of the keyboard up to where our circuit board is. So what I've done, I've fitted this piece of scrap wood on here, I'm going to run a router along it um, and basically make a slot in here and then out through this back bar, the, our new back bar, so that we can get the wires out. So this is just a bit of old software. I've just popped a couple of screws through to the underside of the keyboard, um, which obviously the holes they make won't be seen, um, and it doesn't damage any surfaces that we're going to be uh, looking at. So um, I'm just going to pop the keys back out again. Um, as we looked at before, you can un undo our little uh, clips and remove the keys. Um, I could just put some sort of covering in here and super strong dust extraction, um, but in my case that's a hoover, so probably not going to work that well. So I'm just going to pop the keys out again, um, just so that uh, we don't get any sawdust or, or any rubbish in the keys. Um, and then I'll pop it onto um, the workmate and we'll route out a slot for our wires. Okay, so I've got the um, keyboard, I've removed the keys, it's bolted down or, or clamped down onto the workmate upside down. Uh, I've got the router here, um, I've set the router bit to a depth of about 7 or 8 millimetres, um, which is probably more than we need, but we just want to make a you know, plentiful size um, trench for all these wires to fit through. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, running alongside this piece of wood, cut through here um, and go between the screw and the um, last of the little hooks that hold the keys in, um, or at least that's the plan anyway. So uh, let's have a go. Okay, so that's the first part of the trench. Uh, I don't want to come out the side here, I want to come out the back. So I'm going to reposition my guide piece um, so that we can come in from the back, meet up with that one, and that'll be job done. Okay, so I've repositioned the guide piece now. Um, so it's at 90 degrees to the keyboard. So that will allow me to run the router along here and I can cut in from the back and meet up exactly with the channel that we've just cut. So there we are, that's that operation complete, so now I'll just hoover up the dust, remove the piece of wood, take the thing back into the workshop and we can look at wiring up the pistons. I've got all the keys back in now um, and we're going to start wiring up the thumb pistons. Uh, but I just wanted to point out uh, one thing I've noticed with these. Um, obviously these are brand new uh, Kimber Allen thumb pistons, um, but if you look carefully uh, you'll see they need adjusting before we start. So if we zoom right in on this one, um, the idea is that when I push it, this, this pin comes through and it touches both pieces of metal um, to make electrical contact. But as you can see, it's only actually touching the bottom one. Um, so, <coughs> if I... It's quite hard to do and hold the camera at the same time, but I just push them in slightly towards each other. So then when I operate it, you can see it's actually touching both, um, making them move slightly. And that's what we want, is for it to make them move slightly. So now you can see both pieces of metal are moving and um, it's kind of quite often the case with these I think it's in, in 
postage and packing they, they probably just get um, bent a little bit at the ends but this, this one here isn't touching either side um, so again we'll just push that down and push the bottom one in a little bit doesn't take a lot and now we can see that's working um, if we don't do that obviously then uh, when we go to use them nothing will happen because they're not making electrical contact so it's worth just going along them um, I'll do this side in a minute as well just make sure they're all okay uh, before we start okay I mentioned earlier that we would need to add diodes to the um, thumb pistons um, and so let's just take a look at what diodes are um, this is what they look like and how they come they come on this tape uh, they're little tiny glass things with a, a little black ring around one end uh, which denotes the um, positive end of the diode or <coughs> the end that goes towards positive in our little diagram here so if this is the symbol for a diode that flat line there is where the little black ring is on the diode and likewise up here so just to look at quickly why we need them and how we're going to use them um, when we connect this to our encoder breakout board uh, these are our thumb switches here so I've done three switches there and you'd carry on along here with numbers four five six seven and eight um, because you can have eight in each group and then this is the second group of eight down here so the first group of eight I've done in blue at the top the second group of eight I've done in green at the bottom and so the groups where all the switches connect together that connects to the column input so I've, I've labelled that as column input on our uh, little breakout board um, and then the blue one will be a different column input so I'll label, label them up as column input one column input two and then the notes uh, there are eight of these inputs and these go via a diode to each switch so the idea of having these diodes is that what actually happens with a diode electrically is that it will allow electricity to flow uh, in the direction of the arrow only so if you make this end positive and that end negative then current will flow that way if you make this end positive and that end negative then it will block the flow of the current so it can't go in the reverse direction and that's important in all of these encoders actually not just the Hawktwork hardware ones but um, pretty much all of them from any supplier because the way that the things work is that um, the decoder or the encoder rather is constantly scanning all of the keys and buttons to, to see what we're doing and the way it does it when it gets to this group is that it will make um, one of the notes positive <coughs> and one of these columns will be negative okay um, and so when you close this key electricity will be able to flow through there um, and it will see that flow of current through this diode to that column which it's currently made negative all the other columns would be sitting floating or more often at positive um, so the problem doesn't occur so much on thumb pistons, although it could if you were to press two at once, but certainly on keyboards, if you play notes in different octaves, because generally each octave is in a different column, what can happen is that the encoder makes this negative, it makes that note positive, <coughs> um, but this is also positive anyway. So if you were to play the note that's on this um, switch here, and there was no diode, then that positive would be connected to that positive um, and when you close that key this negative would be connected to the two positives and it would all kind of go wrong because you'd be getting short circuits everywhere so because the encoder um, just deals with one group at a time we use these diodes to isolate the column lines of all the other groups so hopefully you followed that but basically the bottom line is that we need to have them and they need to be wired up like this so it's pretty simple if we've got eight thumb pistons um, so they'd be wired just like these they have a common line along the back just like we did with the keyboards there would be a diode on each one and it's important that the diode faces towards the switch okay um, and then the other end of the diode will come back to um, our note inputs on the breakout board so we can actually wire it pretty much as it's shown here so that's all we need to know really, um, it's quite sounds complicated when you explain it but I'll show you as we wire it up um, and hopefully it'll all become obvious. Okay so I've been along and adjusted each of these contacts um, as we looked at earlier so now all of these actually work properly. Um, so what I'm going to do now is put one of these diodes on each one of these pistons. So I'm going to connect it to the bottom 
um, connection on each piston and then I'm going to connect the top ones um, all together so we've only got five six here one two three four five six so we connect those six together and two the first two of the next group which will give us eight and then the remaining three will be in the second group so going back to our little drawing we looked at earlier um, these ones here these eight uh, will be the blue ones uh, and these three on their own up that end will be in the green group. So um, first thing to do then is to connect one of these diodes to each one. So um, just cut one of them off of the tape like so. <clears throat> Make sure that the, um, the end with the black ring around it is the end that's actually facing um, the thumb piston if you like. And then I just pop it through the hole in the contact, fold it over, and then we can just solder that on. <coughs> just like that. And I want them up nice and straight that way like that. So as the solder sets, so there we are. That's our first, first diode fitted. So I just go along and do the same to all of the uh, other thumb pistons and then we'll look at putting the common lines in and finally we'll look at connecting um, this side of the diodes back to our breakout board. I've fitted all the diodes to the bottom connections of our pistons now and I've just taken a piece of our black wire, um, stripped it uh, so that it's long enough to run through this group of five and I've just threaded it through um, all of the holes on the contacts this side uh, or on the top side if you like of the thumb piston so this is going to be our common line so I should just solder all these connections now um, and then extend it to this one so that'll give us six and then I'll run another piece of wire along and connect it to these two as well so that gives us a common line with um, eight pistons um, and that's the next thing to do so uh, I'll just get on with that and we'll come back when it's done okay so that's our first group of eight thumb pistons uh, done now so we've got the one on the end and then five there and then the two more over here um, so as you can see I've connected a common line between all eight of them um, and that comes back here ready to be connected to our breakout board um, and that's the bit we'll do last. So next thing I'm going to do now is um, connect another common line for these three uh, and then we'll look at connecting up the diodes and how we do that. So I've connected the uh, second common line here now so uh, this is the end of our first one that's number eight and then we start again one two and three on the second one uh, which obviously means that we now have two pieces of wire coming out uh, which we will connect to the columns uh, inputs on our breakout board. So the next thing to do is to start making the connections to this side of these diodes um, and that's obviously the next thing to do but just before we do that I'm just going to pop back to the whiteboard for a second um, and look at exactly how we're doing this with um, the number that we've got. So just looking at what we're actually doing here then um, we've got our eight thumb pistons in a group here uh, which kind of got our common line going back to column one <clears throat> and then we've got our three thumb pistons in the second group uh, with the line going back to column two so that's our two pieces of wire that we've already got coming out of the keyboard so now uh, for our note inputs or row inputs um, of which are also eight uh, the first three are actually common between both of the diodes for each group and then numbers four five six seven and eight are um, just on their own so hopefully that makes sense because there are eight diodes, uh, sorry, eight switches in the first group, but only three in the second. So the note or the row lines, if you like, um, connect to all the groups, and there are two groups, so they connect to both of these. Um, but then we run out of group two, so we just have the remaining four, five, six, seven, and eight with one wire going back to the row inputs on the breakout board. Just to confirm the numbering system that I'm going to use here, I'm going to call these uh, 1, 2 and 3 um, in group 2 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in group 1. Okay, so um, 
looking at our little diagram we had a moment ago the two number ones connect together so that's going to be that one which is number one of group two and that one which is number one of group one so those two will connect together and then that one and that one will be two and um, that one and this one will be three so to make the actual connection uh, I'm just going to trim the end of the diode down to a reasonable amount we don't need miles of it and then just tin that with solder like that and then connect our first wire to it just pop that on with the iron there so that's our first one connected so as we said that's going to come along and connect up one two three one that's going to come and connect up to this one so I'll just cut the wire there. In fact, I won't cut it actually. What I'll try and do doesn't always work, but if I can just pull the insulation back for a little bit like that and then give it a bit of a twist. If I now tin that, that saves actually having to solder two wires on because this one's obviously going to then continue on out to our um, breakout board. So one, two, three, one, so this is the one we're working on, so it'll just cut that diode down to a reasonable length like we did the last one. A little bit of solder on it, and then I can just fold this one, get that bit of solder off, fold this one in half, like that. Um, as you can see that, so I've just folded that in half, and then simply just solder that onto the end of the diode and there we are so the wire now continues along out of our little routed channel and round to the breakout board so that's what we do with those um, all I need to do now is get on and do the others so that's our first uh, first group one and group two with the first ones connected together um, so I'll connect these others together and uh, we'll come back after that. All the wires are fitted now um, to the diodes. It's a bit messy because they're just kind of like sitting there. Uh, but everything's wired up at that end and then they come out roughly around our channel. Um, and they end up there all ready to be connected to our little breakout board. So what I'm going to do next is just make all this nice and neat and tidy. So I'm going to temporarily use some little zip ties uh, just to hold these in the right place. Uh, I'm not going to do the zip ties up tight, it's just to kind of get things roughly where they're supposed to be. And then I shall get some lacing cord and we'll lace it together so that it ends up looking uh, like this. So we'll come back once I've done that. So I've got the zip ties on now, um, holding our cables together. Uh, and just keeping things roughly where they're supposed to be. As I say, I've, I've not done them up tight. There's, you know, there's, there's plenty of movement um, with everything here. Um, just, it just helps guide everything and get it in the right place so that when I start lacing it together, uh, it just makes the job a little bit easier. So I'm going to lace that together now, and we'll come back when I've done that. I've laced all the wires together now, um, and I've brought them round as far as the end of our little channel that we routed out. And now they need to be connected to our breakout board. So I've stopped lacing them here. This is the lacing cord. I've just held it on with a cable tie there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is connect the wires up to the board and then just finish the last bit of lacing after that. So that's the next thing to do. And, and to make it nice and easy, uh, what I'll probably do is connect the first wire, then take the board off of there with the screw, lay it on top, um, connect the other wires and then pop the screws back in to hold it on there and finally we'll finish that little last bit of lacing along here. So that's the next thing to do. I've connected the first wire uh, onto our breakout board. Uh, this is actually the common wire for the first um, group of three on here um, or rather that's the second group of three and the one for the group of eight uh, is still somewhere <coughs> amongst this lot. Um, so what we need to do firstly is identify the next one. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've got my uh, meter here um, which is set on the uh, continuity setting so um, when I touch the probes together it beeps at me. So all I need to do is to connect the um, crocodile clip end to the common of our other group which 
is done. And then I can just check each of these wires in turn until we find which one it is. So let's do these longer ones first. Not that one. Not that one. You don't really need to strip the insulation off of these because um, if you look you can kind of see directly down the end you can see the uh, the wire itself so as long as you point the probe into the end of the wire it should find it fairly reasonably and there we are so it's that one there so this is the wire for our second group just to prove it so all we need to do strip a tiny little bit off of the wire a uh, bit of a twist, get our solder and just tin the end of the wire. And there we go, that's fine. Uh, tin the next pad on our breakout board and then just untangle this actually from these here. It's good if we can keep them fairly uh, in order as they come out so that it just it just makes it easier um, when we go to lace them together uh, just makes it look a little bit nicer so let's get that soldered onto there so there we are so that's the second one connected now uh, in all of our diagrams that we were talking about earlier we've said that there's going to be columns one and two but actually in this installation uh, one and two are used on one of the other keyboards and what I've done um, from the encoder to the uh, this 16-way socket here uh, is a normal IDC ribbon cable um, but in this case I've just fitted two IDC plugs to the cable about 30 centimeters apart so we can plug both of the thumb piston breakout boards onto the same cable so one and two are used from the um, other board which will be covered on pins one and two on the cable or whatever pins they are um, and three and four just make sure it's separate it allows us to use the same ribbon cable for two different um, breakout boards so that's why we've done that so having identified those now all I need to do is out of all of this lot find all of the uh, note inputs so that's simply a matter of taking our crocodile clip uh, attaching it to the wires that go to the diodes like that and then I can just go through these cables again to find the relevant wires and then just solder them on so uh, that's not going to be very exciting to do on camera so I'll just get on and do that and we'll come back when it's done. I've finished connecting the wires to the breakout board now so that's all done already um, so I've just got to finish this little bit of lacing this is the lacing cord here um, get rid of this cable tie. So I'm going to pop this back on the side there where it belongs and just lace up these last bits of cable here. Well that completes all the wiring for this keyboard um, so all I've got to do now is I'm going to use the um, hot melt glue gun here and I'm just going to put some um, bits of glue in the channel just to hold our wires down um, to the end there and I might put a tiny bit behind um, behind this loom here just to hold it neatly in place against that um, or possibly find a small p-clip actually which might be nicer so um, I'll get on and do that and then all we need to do after that is test it so uh, we'll get the wires glued in and we'll come back after that so there we are the uh, cables are done uh, I've glued them in with some bits of hot melt glue which is all nice and dry now uh, reattach that where it's supposed to be, put a p-clip on here uh, just to hold the um, the cables nicely where they're supposed to go so that all looks reasonably neat uh, so that's it really the um, cabling is all done on our keyboard the only thing left to do now is to turn it up the right way plug it into an encoder and make sure everything works properly okay so the only thing left to do to our keyboard now is to test it um, so what I've got here is a Hawktook hardware Tutty encoder and on the end of the USB cable uh, it's just my PC which is running MIDIOX um, and what that is is just a program that monitors all the MIDI activity it's connected via MIDI over USB obviously since there's only the one cable um, 
there is a ribbon cable here, the 16-way ribbon cable, uh, which I've got plugged into um, input number 7, so that would be channel 7. So what we do to test it is we can just plug the other end of that into our breakout board, which <clears throat> will allow us to monitor what's going on with the thumb piston. So if I press the thumb piston and we see what's going on, you can see hopefully there's note on, note off information from the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, uh, sixth one, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and wherever the other one is on the end somewhere. I think I'm oh it's that end. So that's the one on its own. So that's all working. I'm happy with that. So the next thing uh, is to make sure that our notes work. So if we unplug our um, cable from the breakout board and we plug it into our connection strip, <coughs> then as we go along the notes, uh, if we start with C at the bottom, so as I press that you should see the note on and off and if we come closer. You can see that that's C and as I move up, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, <coughs> F sharp, uh, G, and so on, all the way up the keyboard. Um, so if I just go to the other end, um, just as I press notes, we can see that they're actually operating. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, that's all okay. So that's it, really. Nothing else left to do. Well I hope that was useful to you, and if you're thinking of making your own MIDI console for use with Hawkwork or other virtual organ software, then do check out my website, it's www.hawktworkhardware.com, where you'll find all the links to my other videos, as well as a shop where you can purchase the um, items in, we use today, the encoder and the connection strips, leads, etc. Uh, along with all the other things um, that you may need, diodes and so on. Uh, and finally, um, if you like the video and if you are thinking of making a console and you'd like to see more, then do click the like button uh, down below and click on the subscribe and the bell. And that way, as soon as I release new videos, uh, you'll get notified that they're there, ready for you to watch. So, thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful and I'll catch you in the next video.